big thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring today's video. I'll tell you more about them later. We built these truck racks to haul corn and beans to the cannery, but we're not going to be taking things to the cannery anymore. The cannery got sold and things are changing. We're a little bummed about, but that's what happens. And so now we're going to make this truck a grass seed truck. For grass seed, we need a rollover tarp to cover it when we're going down the road. And with this style of tailgate, it's not going to work. So I'm going to drop that tailgate off and start building a new one. After I loosened the bolts and dropped off the cables, my dad stepped by, which was perfect timing to help me drop off the tailgate. I'm hoping to not make any changes to the truck that would prevent us from being able to use this tailgate in the future if we wanted to swap it out for some reason. Everything on the new tailgate should be able to bolt into place. I fired up the CNC plasma cutting table and started cutting some 3 8 inch plate. The first thing I needed to fabricate is a heavy cross piece that will bolt to the top of the side racks and will support the weight of the door. Mag drill isn't really meant to be used on a side like this but it kind of works if you carefully support it. It's a lot better than hand drilling the half inch holes I needed, that's for sure. I wanted the top of the bar to be the same width as the opening at the bottom of the racks. The racks flare out a bit. I'm hoping to square them up some so the door will close nicely. With the top bar done, I could make a frame for the door now. I found I'd make more accurate miter cuts with the bandsaw if I marked the 45 degree line with my speed square first. There's just more to eye and get lined up. I got all four sides squared up, clamped down to the table, and welded. Figured I'd better check the fit. It seemed pretty good. I was aiming for around an eighth of an inch wiggle room on all the sides, and I think it was pretty close. I 
I smoothed up the outside corners and then cut a couple more ribs for the middle of the door. To cover the door with a single piece of metal, I had to pick up a 5x10 sheet. I've always just used 4x8s. 5x10s is a lot more awkward to move, I learned. I trimmed it to size and welded it to the door. There's a little bit of a magnetic charge to the cables when I'm welding, and I think it leaves cool patterns with the metal shavings on the floor. Oops, dang it. I cut the hinges for the door. The plasma cutter leaves a little bevel on the cut edge, which I cleaned up with the die grinder. To make sure all the hinges pivot points lined up, I used a long piece of pipe that matched the diameter of the fert bolts I ultimately wanted to use for the hinges. I incorporated a notch into the bottom side of the hinge, which would also help me line things up. Once I had all the lower pieces welded solid, I swapped out the pipe for the one inch bolts, using a washer as a spacer. I added a two inch slit to the sides of the door. Grass seed is really small and will pour out of cracks if there are any, so the door is going to need to seal it tightly. And the last thing to weld on the door were a couple of chain hooks. This is going to make it a lot easier to move this thing around. I think the door is ready to weld onto the truck. But before I do that, I'm really excited to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Simply Safe. Simply Safe is incredibly effective, reliable home security that will make sure your home is safe and is fully customizable to meet your needs. Kelly and I live out in the country on a rural farm, and so it's really important for us to know that our house is being kept safe while we're gone. Installation couldn't have been easier, and honestly, I actually kind of had fun setting it up. Simply Safe uses a base station as the brains of the system and is expandable with up to 100 wireless sensors and cameras. I really appreciated the well built keypad, New pin which was easy and intuitive to use. And it's going to be quick and easy to arm the system while we're headed out the door. Because every house is different, Simply Safe lets you order the exact number and types of sensors you need. Simply Safe's professional monitoring center will call the police if it's alerted to anything. The camera was also very easy to sync using the Simply Safe app. Now attempting to connect to Wi Fi. It's going to be so convenient to be able to check out things at home while we're gone, even if it's just to see which dog bed Drake chose to sleep on that day. I'm finally going to have security in the barn. There's no problem for the wireless sensors to reach that far. I even installed a smoke detector out there for an added peace of mind after going inside for the night. Click the link in the description and visit simplysafe.com slash rainfall projects to learn more and to start customizing the perfect alarm system for your home. 
Thanks so much, Simply Safe. Making immediate use of the new chain hooks, I picked the door up with the loader and lifted it onto the back of the truck and used a couple clamps to temporarily hold it. I centered the door on the opening and used washers as a spacer to keep a small gap between the top of the door and the cross beam as I pulled them together with clamps. And then I welded the top half of the hinges. I think it's time for a test swing. pretty happy with it. Now I could weld the lip on the bottom to close up the gap. I needed to make a latching mechanism to keep the door closed. And it's gonna to need to be strong so this thing didn't bounce open going down the freeway, spilling a load of grass seed on the smart car behind me. I grabbed the piece of pipe I had previously used to line up the hinges and bolted brackets to the back of the truck that would let it turn inside bigger pipe. I cut it to length. Since it's critical that this latch will be kept very tight, Daniel suggested we use a truck air brake slack adjuster. I cut the splined end off the shaft and welded it onto the pipe. I welded on the tabs that will press against the bottom of the door and keep it shut. I made a pivoting handle for the slack adjuster and it was ready to go on the spline end. If the door starts getting a little sloppy, we can grab a wrench and tighten the slack adjuster to easily get it tight again. I talked my dad into painting the door for me. Man, I hate painting. While he was doing that, I started installing the rollover tarp. It's such a luxury having a rollover tarp. It saves so much time and it's so much safer versus trying to unroll a tarp on top of the truck and get it all tied down, which I've done countless times, but we're trying not to do it anymore if we can help it. My dad gave me a hand again, lifting the rolled tarp 
with the extruded aluminum tubes slid through it up onto the top of the truck. I think I can get up there. Hang on. The last thing to do was install some weather stripping around the outside of the door to fill any small cracks, and this truck was ready to head to the field. <laughs> 